call to order. Uh, are there any changes to the agenda? Uh, Tim, on the radio thing, is that just on the consent? Are you going to talk about that? No, we can talk about it. It's, 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 this is for presentation for you guys. So. Oh, okay. So, so we don't need to make any changes. We're automatically going to discuss it. Yes. Okay. Uh, need approval for the minutes of the last meeting. Uh, well, I don't need approval. If nobody objects, they are automatically uh, approved as distributed. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any objection to them? Any public comment? Is there anyone out there from the public? Uh, no public comment. Uh, financial statement. Uh, Jet. I think it's from Fred. His box keeps lighting up. Chet, it's on. It's up to you now. Actually, it's Barbara. <laughs> Is it Barbara? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, okay, Barbara. Ready? We'll start on page 17, which is the volumes for the month of January. Our average daily census in the acute care was 6.5, 5.1 for acute, 1.3 for swing beds. Year to date, we're at 6.6 .6 with 4.1 in acute and 2.5 in swing bed. The average daily census in the SNF was 49.6. Year to date, it's 49.2. Emergency room, they saw 447 visits, which is still low. Uh, year to date, they're at 3,544. And the prior year for the same period, they were at 4,367. Outpatient visits, we had 1,361 and 9,725 year to date. In the clinic, they're still seeing a lot of patients, a lot of the uh, testing and the um, injections are in these counts. What's well, in actually, the, the injections are in the mobile clinic. I was going to say, what's in the outpatient count? Because, I mean, that's up dramatically. Um, well, some of it is, it depends on, it's ancillary services, yeah. but some of it is the um, COVID stuff, too. Okay, that's what I was wondering, yeah. where that was being placed, too. That's in the outpatient, not the clinic, correct, Barbara? I would think so, because yes. the clinic looks more, the, more just real visits. Yeah, it's, it's in the outpatient. Okay. Right, the ones that they're doing Good, for the thanks. county. Yes. Uh, so the clinic visits were 1,255 for the month. The specialty visits, which are the telehealth visits, were 300. Year to date, the clinic's at 10,875. And the specialty uh, telehealth visits are 2,084. Then in the mobile van for the month, the injections that they gave were 390. Here today, they uh, have 498 visits. The retail pharmacy, they filled 3,220 scripts for the month. And year to date, they're at 23,094. Prior year, they were at 25,014. Um, we didn't have any inpatient surgeries during the month. We had three outpatient surgeries and 42 scopes. Does anybody have questions on the volumes? If not, we can move to revenues. Prior year, we only had eight scopes a month. Is that right? No, that's a variance column. No, oh, no, the actual. Eight. Yeah, it must have been. Um, 44,240, 44,240. Yeah. Let me check that. No questions? Want to go back to? Question, question for Tim on that. Yeah. Because of COVID, yeah. these, they're just not normal. When will we get back to normal? Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> That's the question everybody wants to know. The, well, uh, I have a report that's on my desk that I just printed off yesterday that came out, uh, there was a nationwide look at outpatient volumes uh, and, and by state by state, California is off 34% across the board in their outpatient services, both in ER and outpatient testing. It's consistent with what we're seeing here. 
Um, you know, they're talking about the numbers obviously have dropped dramatically for COVID. Obviously, the number of uh, positive cases has dropped. The number of deaths are, are finally coming down. Um, but, you know, no one really has an answer yet as to how long it'll take. Obviously, the more people get vaccinated, the better we'll be. Um, but even with that, you know, again, with new variants coming out, and those kinds of things, it, it can be a stretch. And a lot of it's going to be the public um, feeling comfortable again, going back to, to, to the hospital again. I mean, this is uh, affecting everyone. It's not just us. I mean, I hear this from the other CEOs as well. Uh, there, there's people have just been afraid, obviously, because of COVID. They don't want to go there to catch it. So, you know, hopefully as the numbers start coming down and they stay down and stuff like that, a lot of those feelings will change uh, and we will gradually begin getting back to normal. Uh, you know, I, I, well, I don't think this is going to be a permanent situation, but, uh, you know, we'll see. Mike, uh, one of the reasons we like SNF, we're down to 49. That's coming back up, though. We so. weren't having really good luck with SNF prior to COVID, but... Uh, because we locked down from taking new admissions and stuff right. like that. So, yeah, well, I mean, so we're finally starting to come up. And my census, I think, is up at 52 and... And stuff like this, and uh, you know, she's looking for. We're finally getting some more people to work back there, uh, and hopefully, we'll begin seeing more more uh, transfers finally coming the, in. So the interesting thing about that, Tim, is that what I see on the last three that have come in, they've come out of acute. Yep. We used to, you know, get patients out of acute whether they were listed to, listed as swing beds or listed as acute beds. Yeah, I don't know what's happening, but somebody's doing more marketing in the acute. All three of those patients have come out of acute. Yeah, other acute settings, yeah, right. Good, so we're working. All right, yeah. thank you, Catherine. Do you have any questions or any, or as we go along? Uh, no, okay, Barbara, thank you. Uh, I guess we're back to Barbara. Okay, go to page 12 now. Um, it's the revenue and expenses for the month. Revenues were $9,652,000. Um, the acute care exceeded the budget, mostly due to the volume of the uh, acute care patients for the month and the intensity of the services. The other areas were all under budget. Our expenses were $2,623,000. Prior year, they were $2,261,000. I want to kind of bring to light what these set show. Uh, now, our volume is dramatically more, as you just saw Barbara say, in the medical surgical than the, we, than the budget. Tiny bit, but not much. But look at the revenue, how much higher it is. Okay, the more acutely ill the patients are in there, the more revenue you'll see. The less acutely ill they are, you'll see that less. For example, if you go down to outpatient, uh, it's actually uh, less in a fairly substantial amount, less than it was uh, last year. And so the situation is when we have those um, tests and in our count, that testing for COVID, it doesn't hit in the revenue because there's not nearly as much charge for that as there is for another. It's about half charge is about half. I think it's a hundred bucks for the testing. And it's uh, about 250, 260 for a medical uh, clinic visit. Okay, Barbara. So then after our uh, non-operating revenues and expenses, we ended the month with a loss of 132,000 in the prior year for the same month we had a profit of 225,000. Um, are there any questions on any of the numbers months to date? How is that affecting our, uh, the money, we've been getting money from a lot of different sources that we need to spend, or some of we're gonna have to give back like the BBB. Uh, are these numbers helping us chat or are we in, uh, let me take you to one of the pages, page 19, which is the last page over there of your financial packet.
Okay. Everybody there? Look about in the middle of the page where it says collections is a percentage of net revenue current month and year to date. What this does is it's on a cash basis. When we do the financials on an accrual basis for the month like Barbara just went through, we actually forecast what we believe is collectible from the net revenue that's there. Revenue, less deductions, less contractuals. And you can see that in, in both cases, our goal is 100%, meaning that we forecasted it exactly correctly and most of the money we're getting is out of collections. In this particular case, we've still been getting money from supplemental income. So for the month, we've had 106.98% of our net revenue, meaning we collected more than what we said we would normally be from just collections. And for the year to date, it's even better. It's 118.83%. So our money collections versus actual dollars in are running for the year to date for seven months, about 9% ahead of what we would do with just collections. Does that help? Yeah, it, it helps, but it doesn't help. <laughs> hey, Chet, just to let you know, I got a call from Emily Duran last night. I will be picking that check up from Kern Health Systems on Friday morning. Okay. That was uh, fantastic. Now, please point. understand, that's not going to hit the bottom line to start with. Yeah. We don't know exactly how much right. we keep something, so it won't be until the end of the year that we, we yeah. may have some that goes in there. Yeah. We'll go in there a little bit as Barbara and I discuss what is okay. We feel like auditors will accept yeah. as far as the money going in. Yeah, just, they said that their state has cleared things, and so we're ready to pick up the check. So, yeah. also, should the board approve the uh, should the board approve the bonds? What I would like to have is about half fifty percent of that money go into a a starter account. We have to have a depository account right. uh, that the trustee or, in effect, the, the bondholders have access to. Right. Uh, and so we're going to set up an account at First Foundation. I want to put about 50% of what we get on the supplemental income in there. It'll still show up on our financials, but it won't be, it'll be, it'll be a depository account. So they don't get, actually have access to our normal depository account. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, Jim, either one of you. Yeah. Where are you getting that money? It's that, that particular money is what's called rate rate uh, return, return money what it is is there's a report that i do HQA, yeah. based upon the actual claims for the prior year not the rate in the current year okay of what we actually got paid versus what our best class estimated cost is from those those uh, particular services those claims and so each one of the hmos will have one in the case of current health systems, it's a situation that then what we do is we compare, see that the initial payment from both current systems and health net are simply a, an upfront payment. They run about what it normally runs for a doctor's office, 60 to $75 per visit from an HMO. Right. But because of the national criteria <coughs> that they have to pay really at least oh. allowable cost, we compare those, okay? And when we compare those, the amount that were actually paid under what the cost was, this is another critical access thing, under what the cost was, and this is also actually only for public hospitals. We were non-public hospital, we wouldn't get this. Okay. It's a situation, and so we get that difference. They pay us that difference. Hey Chad, this is not the rate range one. This is the HQAF. Right. Oh, the one that's coming? It's quality, yeah, yeah it's 4.5 million, right. Oh, I thought you meant the big one, okay. That is the big one, yeah. yeah. The other one that came through the other day, that was the one, the, the rate range one that you sent me the, the table on. So that was like a million and a half for one for and a million for the other, if I remember correctly. Tim, can you tell us about that one that you just mentioned, the second one? The, uh, it's a quality fund, and as I understand, it goes back there. Some of it goes back as far as 2017. Uh, monies that the, the apparently the hospital association was working towards uh, collecting. 
Uh, we received notice from the hospital association about a month ago, um, you know, how much we were going to be getting out of that fund. Um, and so uh, I don't know how that's calculated. As a matter of fact, I sent it to Chet immediately, you know, telling him, you know, are you good with this? What's going on here? Uh, and so forth. So uh, it is one of the other funds that we do receive. So, um, but this one, I don't believe is, was not a matching fund like the- What IT. this is, Kim, on, and it's different this time than it was before. Right. It's the first time it's come from the HMOs. Right, That's correct. HQAF. And yeah. when, it came from the, when it came from the state, it was quarterly. It was not a whole year. Yeah. This is a whole year and some. Right. right. So it's, now that it's coming from the HMOs, I think it's calculated the same way, which basically comes from the criteria that the state believes they're supposed to have for taking care of these Medi-Cal patients. It's all Medi-Cal, okay? All Medi-Cal and Medi-Cal managed care. And so that difference in quality factors that they measure, uh, if you meet those factors on a certain basis, then they will give you the HQAF yeah. amount. And the HQAF amount has a uh, kind of a floor in it as well, but that's how we get that money. Okay, Chet, uh, a lot of that's based on uh, from the HMOs on performance. That they're paying you a little extra so they perform. The employees should participate in in that uh, at least twenty five percent. Now that might come out to three thousand dollars. No, twenty five percent would be a million dollars. <laughs> 25% would be a million dollars. Okay. Uh, that's, that might be a little bit about 3,000. <laughs> that's a little high. Uh, yeah, we, we see a lot of medical. Let, let, let me tell you, we got a the medical. Bucks. Yeah, the medical managed care patients keep us alive. It's that simple. Yeah. Okay. So, Tim, you don't, you don't think the employees should participate in any of that? I didn't say that. I just, like I said, we need to, let's get the check in hand and let's see how it's calculated and all that stuff, what it's being driven by and so forth. You know, the, uh, it's up to the board to decide if they want to make distributions to, to the uh, staff or not. Uh, like I said, we've never done that in the past. Actually, Tim, they yeah. cannot. Okay. Yeah, I don't know that. They cannot, if that you're talking stopped. about HQAF money, it's, that's, that is actually money for quality, right. and it's not for employees. You can't right. spend it on employees. You must spend it on services. Now, and we'll, I, you know, I've never seen anybody do that. It must be spent on services to medical patients. Yeah, that's very possible. I, like I said, I'm not that familiar with the HQAF. I'll, you know, okay. talk to your current health systems about it. Okay, but, it's uh, good. It's, totally it's, it's awesome, and uh, I just felt like somewhere along the line we need to. To give some benefit to our employees who are awesome and they they absolutely deserve nope. part of whatever we get. The problem is that you need to go through a payroll to do something like that because in a public hospital you can't give bonuses, you can't give a gift of public funds to your employees. Okay. That's a no no. Okay, okay. Then are we back to Barbara? That's a Scott thing, so we'll kill that. Uh -huh. Go ahead, Barbara. Please. <laughs> Quick. <laughs> Okay, the following page is the year-to-date, page 13. Um, year-to-date, our revenues are 66956000 which is slightly above the prior year-to-date, but not quite at what we projected in our budget. Our expenses totaled 17852000 The prior year, they were 16208 And so year-to-date, we're showing a loss of $909,468, whereas last year we were at 287,000 profit. Um, if there's no questions, we'll move on to page 23. And that's our calculation of our days in the accounts receivable which were at the end of January, 83.4. And our accounts payable days at the end of January were 44. The following page is our cash receipts for the month or our cash flow. Um, we collected 
2,460,000, whereas our budget showed 1,737,000. And you can see the biggest, um, well, a big part of that collection was miscellaneous cash. And that was some of those other things that we get paid for throughout the month. Um, there was, well, we actually received our ship grant in this month, the 83,000. Um, we received another uh, QAHF payment, which came from the state, from the Department of Healthcare Services for 411,000. Um, our total expenses paid were 2,574,000. And with our other uh, non-operating cash, we ended up with a cash balance of 732,000 or eight days cash on hand. Our budget was at 50,000. Are there any questions on the cash? Now this kind of shows you the difference when you get a, for example, that miscellaneous cash up there at 500,000, that's the reason it is where it is. And that's all pretty, pretty much mostly supplemental income. That's how it, that's how it flows. That's why we're at 118%. Okay, is that it, Barbara? Um, there's two other pages which have to do with the old bonds. If um, on page 26, just shows our debt service ratio, which is currently a negative 10 and our total current ratio is at 0.5. The, that's page 26, and on page 27 is the uh, bond requirements under the old bond. Barbara, before you leave page 26, <laughs> look how different that we are than that goal, okay? Where we are, and when it looks like, when it shows the debt service to coverage ratio here, it's not year end because it has, doesn't have the supplemental income calculated in it, okay? Our goal, our, we have to be above 1.25 right now, even before the new bonds or the old bonds. We are at year end after we actually get through, but our operations are running at a negative 0.10. We can't even cover our debt one time from operations. That's important. Down the next one down you see basically is the current ratio. That means what can you service your debt within one year that's there? We're supposed to be able to cover at least 1.4 times. It's a half time. We can't even cover our current debt from our current assets one half time. Now, how much is that? Not, this is not the end of the year, but during the year, so during the year, it does not, it's from operations. So by the end of the year, in the supplemental income, we actually get up to the 1.4%. Mm -hmm. But it's important to note we didn't have the supplemental income where we would be from operations. Are you saying we need to work harder? <clears throat> or we should perform better? Is that what I heard you say? That's what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, Catherine, are you there? She's on mute. Okay. Yeah, I'm here. Sorry, my phone would unmute. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, too. I, I, I've been trying to ask you to, because You'll probably be running this meeting. I'm so old, I might fall over here one of these days <laughs> in the middle of the meeting. But thank you. Um, and I, I just want to make a point here. You know, Chet talks about the 0.5, um, you know, uh, current asset issue here. You know, we got $9 million that we put into investments that don't, that come out of current assets that actually makes us look substantially worse. I mean, we did that obviously for certain reasons. But you got to take a look at what's really in the balance sheet uh, in terms of, of cash and so forth. So we aren't as bad as that sounds from a balance sheet perspective. So, um, you know, let's look at the whole picture there. You're right about the balance sheet, Tim, but all that money that goes into investments is supplemental income. We don't no, put anything in investments that's not. It's still cash. I mean, it's still part of our. Oh, yeah. Life. No question about that. No right. question. That's my point. Okay. But our incomes, what? keeps us going if with the, without the future income we might get a little pile of money here during COVID, COVID right. but but uh, okay yeah I mean, that's what I'm saying this is an unusual year I mean we're we're still suffering under this we're still trying to figure out what the new normal is going to look like and how we're going to have to adjust everything to do that but I mean I agree with Chad I mean there's some there's some things that like I said that, that we've gone on long enough that we probably do need to 
really take a real hard look at. But, uh, you know, uh, like I said, as we're beginning to appear like we may be emerging from this, you know, we want to uh, don't cut our throats here to spite our face. So anyway, we will continue to work on that. The new normal could be worse than the old normal. <laughs> right now. Always the possibility. Oh, yep. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Are we back to chat? Ah, uh, yes. And the first, uh, first one is the current, the liability analysis. And I think the only thing that really always sticks out in that liability analysis is the, uh, the, the current liabilities, if you will. And the current liabilities tell us that uh, we actually have almost $15 million in current liabilities. And it tells us that's as compared to, well, excuse me, 16 million now, as compared to uh, 2 million as an average over 14 years. So we, before, we got the, before we got the supplemental income and before it came into place for Medi-Cal and Medi-Cal managed care under Obamacare, we actually used to only get, oh, $600,000, $700,000. Still not bad, okay? But now all that money is coming in from supplemental income. So that's where that money is until the end of the year. After the end of the year, there's another schedule that has to go into the trustee that actually we would have to have a management company come in if we didn't make our bond covenants. So bond covenants are extremely important here for us to do whatever we want to do. I mean, what I mean by that is whether we want to get, buy bonds, whether we want to put money into expansion, that's the money that we can use. And we can't use anything from operates, absolutely none. We don't have any. That's what's important. Okay, go down to the next one. Here's the one thing that Tim was talking about. What page are you on? I missed it. Oh, I'm sorry, I was on 28, going to 29. Okay. <laughs> on 29, this is the rolling 12 months uh, cash flow. You can see that the budget is actually based upon, and it's higher than, it's actually higher than what some actuals are. So it was at 27 million is what we had budget, which is a lot on the revenues or the cash receipt side based upon uh, the prior year. No inflationary increases, okay? We actually took in 37.7 million. So $10.8 million, we were ahead. And if you look at where that happened, it all happened in June, May, April, March, when money was coming in for COVID under the HHS and the uh, supplemental income. So that's where the, all the money came from there. Ten, ten, it's actually, you, if you want to, talk, want to talk about it, it's about $8 million that we put into investments. We got actually got almost $11 million more than what we would have gotten uh, for claims. On the other hand, we, of, that, of that 10 million, we didn't put it all, as I said, we only put about 8 million in to investment type things or non-operating type things, which is where the money's coming from. 2.9 million, we spend on operations. So we took 2 million, 2.9 million of the money coming in from supplementals and we spend it on operations, if that helps you. If you go down below, that's the separation of the, uh, the supplemental income. You can see that 8 million, that's what, again, we're coming from, uh, and, it's, and, it, and it's going into two things. It's actually mostly going right at this point in time into the investment accounts, uh, but it actually also is out there to pay if we have to uh, any long-term debt that's coming from bonds or interest on those bonds. And that's, those are the two things that we use it for at this point in time. So we were, there's about $8 million that's setting out there uh, as far as availability. Actually, we have $9 million in our uh, LAFE account at this point in time. And that will stay there as far as I'm concerned uh, until we start using it for uh, construction. I think we have 4.1 that we actually originally put in there for construction. Um, and that's all it's in there at this time. But it, 
it's actually board designated, but there's, there can be more. Um, you can see there that the current liabilities show again the 15 million. That's a, again where that money's flowing. So the current liabilities are 16 million greater than what they were at the end of 2019. The accounts payable actually are $408 million less than what they were in 2019. So some of the money we got from, uh, from supplemental was spent on taking the accounts payable down. You remember how when that was much higher. That's where that is. Barbara, your turn. <laughs> <laughs> can, can I ask you a question before we get to Barbara? Uh, is there any way, now I don't know a lot about what you do. Is there any way we can find to get some payment to the employees? Can you look for a way that we can take to the board and let them look at it as a one-time payment? Because they, they've been troopers, they've been absolutely awesome. And they're paid average, and if we can give them something extra, can you look to find a way? We'll look and see what we can do. Okay, uh, Barbara. Page 30 is just your uh, local vendor aging uh, list of, account of accounts that are outstanding at the moment. Most of it's all current, it's $18,000. Anybody has any questions? Uh, can we add on the non-local vending? How many are there? Because I maybe if the the ones that are over sixty days or something like that, can we put that on there, Chet or Barbara, uh, on the next report? The ones maybe over sixty days to cut it down to where there's not shouldn't be a lot. There's a lot. Over sixty. There's a lot. There's a lot. Well, I, I run the reports, so I know it's on there. Well, why would they <laughs> be over uh, Okay. We'll run a list for you. We'll run it by Eugene so you can see what it is. Okay. All right. Thank you. I don't guess there's any questions on that, Barbara. Okay. The following page is the contract list for the month. But this doesn't necessarily mean that each of these contracts are renewing this month because we bring them on an annual basis, even if the contract spans uh, three years. Normal is a three year max on a contract. Um, we have an agreement with Dr. Shamas, who is an ER physician. He provides services in the emergency room to patients. Confidence US. Start up for nursing, start up for nursing. I'm sorry. What page is that? Page 31. Um, Confidence UST is a. Underground storage. For yeah. Well, for our diesel fuel. I, yes, for diesel. It's $95 a month. Um, we have John Elliott. He's a physician in the emergency room also. ERAD is a service that does the storage of the x ray films. Um, it's $2.50 per study. Uh, GoDaddy is a service that provides the secure certificates for our servers. Now, when Carrie was looking at this this month, there is one that is coming due, but there are multiple certificates on GoDaddy. So we're going to list all the GoDaddy certificates together. However, they all come due at different times, yet they're all under one agreement. So he only has one that is coming up this month, or in April, actually. It looks like there's one certificate per server, and so there should look like three of them here. Well, there was, there was three that I listed here, but since he's made a list that he sent to me okay. after the fact, okay. and there are more than three certificates. Okay, I can ask him about that. Um, current Community College, we have an allied health agreement. There's no cost to that. Kern Gastro Medical, they lease a portion of the building that we occupy on uh, Birch next to the clinic. Uh, 
Peter Jackson Newell is an emergency room physician also. Um, Otis is the uh, service for the elevator. They do PMs quarterly. Clicksoft is a secure messaging subscription that we use to allow people to communicate uh, securely. It's primarily our nurses and our doctors on call. Yes. They're away from the hospital. Quest Diagnostics is, um, they do outside lab tests, tests that we cannot perform ourselves inside and are sent to Quest. Relias Learning is the employee learning uh, program that we use. Staffing Connection is a nurse registry used only as needed. UEI is a It's a training program that Greg has used in the clinic to I think it's supposed give, to be an affiliation agreement. I think yeah. it is too. <laughs> <laughs> it's a training yeah. program for MA. Yeah, right. yeah. He, well, he can bring staff in who are learning and they help educate him. There's no cost to us for that. Valley Medical Staffing is a staffing service. Zoom is the service we're using to communicate pretty much every day. <laughs> <laughs> and the biomed guy is the um, service, biomed service on the anesthesia machines and other machines throughout the hospital. Um, Alta Sierra Broadcasting is on here, but that's a rollover and it is included in the packet. And I don't know if you want to discuss it now or after. <laughs> Any questions? I don't have any questions. No, other than the Autosera. Tim, you're going to talk about that now? Well, we'll talk to him when we get to it on the agenda here. So. Oh, OK, OK. It's coming up pretty quick. All right. OK. Still on you, Barbara? No, it's That's Chet. It. Oh, Chet. Are you in the emergency department? No. For Dr. For Dr. Newell? Yes. yes. Dr. Newell is just basically uh, it's time for his it's time for his contract to come due again, which is happens to all of our physicians every three years. So we've given him some, he was actually pretty high before. We've given him some small updates. Uh, for uh, he's actually at $160 an hour as his standby. Uh, that's not a change, I don't believe, but it's 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 one of the higher ones that we actually have. Uh, as far as uh, anything else, that it's pretty much the same uh, as it has been. The uh, other thing is the physician gets fists in his $70 <clears throat> per visit as compared to uh, the actual 160 times as it, his hours. So $70 per visit, we compare the two and then the higher of the two is what they get. Again, he's on the, on the high side, except for Dr. Shamas. He also uh, pulls yes. probably most shifts in there. So he's been... Uh... And also, he's probably one of the most flexible that we have if we've got somebody's off that he will cover those ships. So he's been a... He does do that. Yeah. He actually sees more patients than any other right. ER physician we have. I'm not saying whether they're... I'm not speaking to the quality, I'm speaking to the volume. Right. He sees more ER patients than any other physician we have. And that's pretty much the gist of that contract. I have a question. Do we do uh, peer reviews as the contracts come due or anything like that? Well, the medical staff's responsible for doing that as part of their, their annual duties. Okay. It comes through the med exec committee. There, there is also a, a compliance form that when contracts come due, yeah. that the department managers are supposed to complete for compliance um, and submit to Sally Emery to assure that the contract that they have 
is being effective. Okay, thank you. Hey, Chet. Yes. Page 35, section 10. Yes. Correct your dates. Did we miss a date? Yeah. Term and termination is April 1st of 2018. <laughs> You're right. Absolutely right. Hey, that should be uh, April 1, 2021. <laughs> and it actually terminates February 28th. Or actually, that should be March 1 because it's, it's ending in February. So make that March 1, 21. 2021, and that's February 28, 2022. Well, you're doing a three year term, correct? We do a one year term. This is Esper Scott. Renewal. We do a one year term with two renewals if we, it, based upon the agreement of both parties. Okay. Uh, Fred, thanks. Thanks for correcting that. Normally, you don't get involved with a meeting because you'll show a preference one way or another on the questions you're asking or the input you're inputting. Now, I'm, it's not, it's every meeting. Uh, John, correct? He is public asking a question of a contract. Yeah, I think the public, you know, the member of the public could ask about uh, something like that. Let's say if they saw the packet, they could ask about that. Yeah, but don't wouldn't they ask at the beginning of the meeting or I'm fine. I don't have a problem with what he asked, mm -hmm. but yeah, we, we just we just want to make sure we don't violate the Brown. Act. Right, right. I, mean, that's the time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. I believe he's okay because technically I know on other at current health systems, for example, when we do our board meetings before we take a vote on anything. Um, the board has to, a chance to weigh in on it, then the public has a chance to weigh in or ask questions or whatever, and then the um, vote is taken at that point in time. So I think we're probably okay. So, so we just need to fall into to line. Right. I don't have a problem with any question, everybody free for all, except we want to be, John's probably the most politically correct one here. Yeah. Uh, Worst case scenario is it would have gone to the board <laughs> meeting and it would have been caught at the board meeting and we would have fixed it there. So, I mean. Okay. All right. Hey, thanks. Didn't mean to. to yeah. Interrupt. Does. Good catch though. Where did we leave off there? That was the end of that one. Alta Sierra. Okay. Next one's not mine. <laughs> You've got enough of monitor. <laughs> I'm going to let this is the Alta Sierra, and, and Deb has been, you know, working and negotiating with Charlie on this. So I'd like her to address this as it relates, especially to our discussions at strategic planning. So, in the past, we were paying $1,200 a month, and we've been paying that since, I think, 2014. It's been a while. And we didn't want to address it until Charlie was off the board, and now that he's off the board, Plus we did our strategic planning and based on what we found out through our um, strategic planning is that it benefits us to still use the radio, but we need to target our ads instead of just having them run whenever. So I asked Charlie to give us a, pr a price on targeted ads at specific times during the week, including a Saturday and a Sunday and what he came up with is on three of the radio stations, we'll be paying $300 a month, a month which is, um, comes down to $3,600 annually, I think on each mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whereas before we were paying 1,200 and they weren't targeted. Yeah, it was a shotgun all over the place. So yeah, when we identified the times when people were actually right. listening to the radio station, we decided that we would focus our ads to those times only and just periodically just a mention uh, ad uh, during those other times just to make sure that uh, people who aren't listening at that time will still hear it at some point. So those are pretty rare, I mean. So what we found is most people were listening to the radio during the morning hours and then again around the 11, uh, noon hour. Can I make a comment? Yeah. Okay. The, the contract is for all three and they're the same. 
KCNQ, most people know what it is. The other two stations, I'll challenge any one of you to say what they are without looking on there. Okay, one of them is the rock station. Right. Is the what? Uh, it's a rock and roll station. Okay, okay. That Go one, it's, it's, he just kind of changed the format I, maybe two years ago. Carrie Q, I think, is the one that most That's, people listen to, isn't it? Um, yeah. So, yeah. Well, why wouldn't you go uh, a total? We're to, spending a total of ten thousand dollars. Spend six on KC and Q, and two each on the other one. The the ads in, in the other two stations are are not worth the same thing the other one's worth, and we're paying more than the market. We could do that. I mean, we could certainly increase this one. Well, can you change them around to where that, nobody listens to the other two stations, basically? I don't okay, have one, a one of them's a country station. So obviously we want to keep that one. And then the other one the is, uh, is the AM station. It's more of a rock and roll station. So you're going to lose the audience that listens to that, that doesn't listen to country. But I, whatever you guys want to do, I'm fine. How many people are there? Well, all I'm saying is you should negotiate and look at the, the amount of people that's watching them. Or all right, watching we'll come back with something for the board meeting. We'll, we'll, we'll make those adjustments and see if we can come back. And then, the, uh, Deb, does that include new radio spots? Yes. Yes. So he's going to do new some new uh, material? Yes. Yes. That's up up for nursing, and and, then, and that, that would be up to us. And what the other thing, Deb, uh -huh. is all of our contracts before had a 30 day notice that it could be canceled, and this one didn't. I didn't see that. I don't anticipate that we would want to cancel, but things change. And so, since it's always been in there, we should try to keep it in there. Uh, That's a good point, Gene. There's a 14 day notice. 14 day notice. Where is it? Um, what is it, a 14 day notice? I can't yeah, contract subject determination by either party upon 14 days prior written notice. Under number four at the bottom. Yes. The, it's on so there for each. It's on there for each of them. The total is not a problem. It's just the the um, amount of time spent. Yeah, no, I I understand, Gene. We'll we'll see if we can make some adjustments on that. So, Gene, for clarification, you want to know the number of listeners on each of those three oh, radio stations? Not, not me. I mean, just no. We need to know that. Well, okay, but that's yeah, what you're asking. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Okay. All right. That's that's my input. We would need a new proposal by tomorrow. <laughs> right. Yeah. Sorry, that won't happen. But okay. If he wants to go, if he wants it in the packet, we'll need it by tomorrow. Yes. We could pay twice as much for the better station and balance it out. I agree with you. Them out. Okay. Good, good comment. Thank you. Okay. Uh, anything else? We're Jet, are you done? Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> I got lots. <laughs> uh, this was just going to be free. It's budget time. And uh, we need to start the, or we have started the uh, operating cash flow and capital budgets for 2022. I'll just hit highlights on these pages. Otherwise, you can read them for yourself. Uh, the first one I'll hit is the target surplus on page 43. You can see the audited surplus uh, for 17 was 1 million seven. For eight, fiscal 18 was 3 million three. For fiscal 19 was 2 million seven. For fiscal 20 uh, was 3 million one. Uh, we're at 900,000 loss right now. I'm still targeting 1 million 48,000 for to come out with a surplus after we get through with our audit for this particular year. And for next year, uh, I've got on there 1085000 uh, It's pretty much, let's see, the workload assumptions are coming from this year. There's not a whole lot of increases in the workload assumptions. The rates and charges, I'm again pr proposing 7% increase uh, in our rates and charges as of July 1. The deductions from revenue are a function of 50, approximately 50% of our increase in rates because about half of it falls to the bottom line with some differences in, depending on what we've done this year and uh, if, we, if we haven't gone that far 
In most of the cases, our increases have been uh, more than, uh, actually less than the three and a half percent, I should say, increases in deductions, less than the three and a half percent. And so we'll actually take that into consideration also. Our staffing basically is uh, a basis of the actual volume. Uh, we actually don't have that many, uh, I haven't proposed that many changes uh, from what we had budget wise in this year. Um, we had, for fiscal 21 through January, we had paid employees of 215.68. Uh, again, that has all of the, uh, all of the testing hours, all of the, uh, all of the overtime hours, et cetera, in there. And the 22, I'm proposing 214.1. We'll look at as we look at the departments and Barbara gets that into place. We'll show we'll, we'll refine that more. The salary program I'm proposing, uh, and we may want to change this a little bit. We were talking about it, but before we're ready to do this, we'll have to go back to the personnel committee. And what that is is that we had four percent increase with because of the timing, two point five percent increase in uh, range adjustment or parity and 2% in merit. We're talking about actually doing is the same level, but then splitting the uh, two and a half percent that's range adjustment in between the high and low paid employees. So we won't get caught with minimum wage and at least, at least for the first trial going to somewhere in the neighborhood of 3% for the lower paid employees and 2% for the high paid employees in uh, range adjustment. Uh, then we go to the, uh, the benefits. You can see the benefit structure is a little higher than it was last budget. Uh, what's gone up a little bit is our group health, dental, life, and vision. It, that's gone up a little bit. Uh, our workers' compensation has gone up a little bit. Uh, and our employee employer's pension has gone up a little bit for our matching. Um, the contract labor is based upon the year 21 plus uh, about 4%. Our professional fees are like that as well, except that we moved some things around. Dr. Montez is gone. Uh, Dr. Lopez has no guarantee, but we are talking about bringing Dr. Monger in. So these things are trying to be, and Dr. Monger will have a, uh, Guarantee pay of, of $20,000 paid over two years, and that contract comes through. Uh, the purchase services uh, are what we've done plus 4%. The medical supplies for drugs, it's what we've done plus 4%, uh, or excuse me, 3.5%, three, yeah, 4% and 3.5% for all other supplies. The non medical supplies, food and food items, are what we've done plus 3.5%. Utilities basically uh, always seem to go a little higher than normal inflation. So it's what we've done plus five. I know we're supposed to save some money there, but I don't really see a whole lot of savings yet. So it's still that budget is still at three and a, it, it's still at uh, this year plus five. Uh, repairs and maintenance are this year plus seven. We're going to be in the throes of the uh, construction. And as well, we're going to try to do some of the things that we can on site, Bob knows that, that that's what we're trying to do. So it's gonna cost him a little more. So we're talking about this year plus 7%. Uh, the insurance actually is based upon what we're seeing. It's actually, again, we're gonna suffer for some of the things covered by COVID, some of the things other, other covered by other disasters across the nation. And so we're talking about uh, actually 20, 25% of what it was two years ago, and it will stay in the range of maybe 20%. Uh, other expenses, we're talking about what we've done plus three. Bad debts, we're talking about 2.3% of gross. That's, a, that's good, it's, that's actually pretty good. The average across the country is 3%. Rents and leases, I said that was gonna stay the same. However, we just got an increase on some of the departments over the Jim Wiley owns. And we'll actually take that same percentage 
and put that on to the people that, that, we, that we rent to there. Depreciation is going to be based upon the schedule as we actually get. Most of the things in the construction will not be depreciated. Okay. Things like the uh, things, th things basically that aren't finished until the end of the construction. But things, for example, like the, the building down on the, on the boulevard, once it's actually uh, fixed up inside, we can go ahead and begin to depreciate it, and we will. And we're actually depreciating for a full year the mobile clinic. Uh, interest expense is going to be based upon you know, the bond, and actually, the new bond indenture more than anything else, the long term interest. And it won't hit the bottom line with expense, it'll actually hit until we start using those, uh, the, the, the new hospital, or we start using those items that we are actually financing for the bonds, it'll go into uh, the balance sheet only. Uh, as things come off, we begin to use them, or then we, then we begin to have the interest expense. And that's, we'll try to come up with that. Uh, income and donations, we're talking about uh, for the purpose of uh, lump sum donations or from the auxiliary and or the, the uh, foundation, we're talking about 179,000. Uh, it's forecasted for next year. Most of it's going to be funny. We have in construction, and this does not take into consideration that. This is mostly for uh, equipment that they actually feel that they want to sponsor. The retail pharmacy, uh, I'm figuring pretty much the on par with 21, which is a, a, a loss. I think it'll be a loss again. Uh, non operating revenue, uh, we do have money in there still. We're talking about um, some of the HHS money obviously is going to go away. How much the what will be affected by the uh, CQ, the, the quality portion from, but we know basically that we're going to get at least, I'm giving on the low side, very conservative, 281,000 that we can actually bring to the bottom line before the audit. Um, the operating cash flow is will be the same basis as, as we have been in the past, which means that we take in the, the finance, by financial class, the revenue with no increases in for inflation, meaning we don't get any more in the contracts than we have. In many cases, that's exactly what happens uh, with the cash receipts. The cash disbursements will be based upon uh, the actual disbursements for 2021 plus an inflation factor of three or three to four percent, uh, money actually coming and going from for for the first foundation line of credit. I don't see much coming out of there, but we will still have uh, to make sure it's down to just 30 days. If we actually do that for 30 for 30 days out of the year, it has to be at zero. So we have to show that in our cash flow that it would actually be down to zero. Um, let's see amounts being borrowed. Actually, we have, uh, we, we want to keep in, in our reserves for actual operations. Uh, and we have, we have actually a, a uh, oper a little bit of money in there for that. Uh, and so that's about 900,000, enough to cover two payrolls. So about to be about a million dollars next year, 900 to a million dollars. Capital uh, expenditures. We actually uh, have all the preliminary cost estimates. This is a little more than what's in the budget for the construction. I know that Bob would like to see that, but it's not something that's been approved. Uh, that's like I've got 19 million six in there. Uh, let's see. That is the construction I just talked about. Also the, the CEC money. Uh, we hope that we get the uh, 344,000, I'm not sure that we will. So we'll see if, at this point in time, I'm, I'm wrestling with whether to budget that into next year or not. And that, those are the general operating assumptions. Barbara, you wanna go over the, the volumes? Okay, on, the, on the page 50, it's just a summary of the last few years and an annualized number as of the end of January for their volumes. And then we calculate out what's projected for the new budget. 
So we take the um, annualized number and then we spread it based on what they've been doing using four years worth of history to come up to a targeted number. Um, these have gone out to the departments. N no one has uh, come back with anything yet. I, one, only one, I've gotten one from, uh, actually I've gotten one from Imaging and they're saying it's fine. Judy yeah, says I, it's I, fine. I had a couple of questions. The mobile van, I think obviously we're budgeting basically where we are now and we just started this year. so. Correct. I think we probably should put a little bit more in there, at least maybe at least another 50%. Um, well, I think Greg will evaluate it and look at it when he uh, goes over the numbers, because he usually comes back and either says how he wants to increase or if he thinks that, the, that it's reasonable. Well, aren't these being presented for approval today? They're so, being presented as what we're projecting at the moment. Okay, so we're not going to be yeah. blessing these yet for budget, correct? Correct. Okay, all right. Yeah, so you know, I had some issues there. I had some issues, obviously, with our CT scan number because we were reflecting an increase there. But I was concerned because of the issues we've been seeing with Dignity not approving them and forcing them to go down the hill. That couldn't we expect some decrease there? Uh, See, this is based on a four-year average, so no, I know. But again, you got to take a look still, at what market stuff is going correct. on too to affect this stuff as well. Correct. And then, you know, pharmacy I thought was up a little high considering where we've been. I mean, it's. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking at this on a per patient day basis because we're looking at 54 scripts per patient day. If I'm including both the bed surge and swing beds in here, because sniff is obviously filled by retail. So it just seemed high volume in there. And I, I don't know what's going to be changing it from where we've been the last two years. Uh, up this, isn't up. Quite, this isn't quite scripts in pharmacy. It's line items, Kim. Right. It isn't whole scripts. It's just line items. I yeah. medication each, each dose. This is medication dispensed, which is prescriptions. So to the in to in the house. patients, right? right. In house. Correct. It's this is the in house stuff. The outs, retail's down below, which I didn't have any problem with that one. It just seemed a little high on the inpatient side, that's all. because uh, again I want to go back and compare that against the how we were projecting for inpatient volumes for next year and so forth. So Physical therapy, I thought, might be, could come up a little bit higher. Obviously, now, you know, again, she's getting a new system. She's got another person on board. Same thing with, with OT. We haven't really had OT presence there. Mm -hmm. She's now got someone in-house who's supposedly starting to build that volume. So I think we need to press a little bit on that. So just some, just some of my ideas and thoughts, that's all. Tim, Tim on the pharmacy, <clears throat> didn't we start getting uh, some additional money from uh, uh, was it medical or where was it a couple hundred thousand we got in recently uh, in pharmacy actually I can answer that Go ahead. Okay. the answer is no oh okay <laughs> because, <laughs> the, because the pharmacy the retail pharmacy if you're talking about the retail pharmacy yes. is not even a cost base department for the hospital it must try to stand on its own Medic Actually, we're even trying this year to have no overhead allocation. So the answer is no, there's no money budgeted in there extra for. Yeah, what if, if we did, it would have been on the acute side. And I, I'm not familiar with anything we've gotten pharmacy wise. You know what okay. I mean? Thank you. That's all, unless there's any other questions. Catherine, anything? No, I don't have any. I'm glad that occupational therapies on board though, that's a good thing. Definitely. Yeah, I, just, yeah, we're gonna, I wanna challenge them to push them to get some more, more cases in there. And again, cause I know they're putting that new system in that's gonna allow for telemedicine capability in there, which should allow them to also build business. So, which I think will be very helpful, especially with OT. So I have a question about retail pharmacy profits have decreased since 2004, is that, the reflection is, is the skilled nursing decrease in patients volume. Some. Reflection some, on that. Some. It's about 40% skilled, skilled nursing. Yeah. It's less than you think. The other side of it is, again, the, the higher cost of the drugs compared to what the reimbursement's looking like for some of those drugs. So that's, that's another piece of it. 
we're going to be working on the uh, the pharmacy and giving them a lift somewhere down the line here. But at any rate, it should get better. Okay, that are we are we to the uh, first foundation bank or is that where we're at? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and and we I know oh. they have the uh, the term sheets in here, but we saw that some of the term sheets before. You can read through the term sheets. What I wanted to do, okay, okay. First, we have the revolving line of credit, which is the working capital, which is five million dollars. Uh, the term is two years, and then it has to be renewed. Uh, as I said before, in the budget, uh, thirty days. Uh, we have to have it at zero during that. You fit that uh, every, every year. That so so twice in that uh, first two years. Each year period, we have to have it down to to zero for 30 days. The second piece is the uh, actual loan for the paying off the loans or paying off the bonds that we now have, and the Heathcliff loan to Cal Mortgage. And that's 12 million seven hundred and fifty thousand. It's a 13-year term. Uh, the average life in years of the bonds at this point in time are 5.41 years. Uh, the covenants, we talked about the covenants. We have to make them by the end of the year. 1.25, that's what we've been using this in the, with the current bonds. But we basically uh, have a new covenant here that we didn't have uh, if we actually go down below the 1.25 at the year end, then we actually have to have 75 days of minimum of days cash on hand. If we are okay, basically, we have to have uh, 50 days of days cash on hand at greater than, than uh, 75 days. So again, if there's a consideration where days cash on hand, Barbara will have to replace some of the things like current ratio with days cash on hand calculation as per the uh, indications on the actual indenture. Uh, in additional terms are not good, but I brought the next item down is probably ones I think will help, should help answer some questions for you, which is the sources and uses of funds. Uh, and that actually has the bond proceeds. You can see there's the 12 million 582,000. Okay, so the refunding of the bonds is going to take 1514 The refunding of the loan to Cal Mortgage is going to take 5458 And then it's going to be 5006 of new money for the construction. Okay, if you go down, actually, that's the sources. That's where money is coming in. So we're going to get in 12582000 <laughs> The projected uh, funds actually go to the new money going, they will keep a hold of the, actually they'll spend the uses of funds before we actually, you'll see down there, the deposit, the refunding of 2,000 free bonds. What they do is they put it in a defeasance account until the bonds come up. Uh, and so they actually don't pay them off until the bonds come up. They just effectively hold the money and it does earn some interest. That's 1,483,000. They actually also have, we have insurance or issue cost of interest, I'm sorry, on the, uh, on the bonds. That, that's the attorney's fees, financial advisor's fees, the underwriter's fees, and it's about $30,000. Uh, then we got a small amount that's over and above that. Then we have the funding, refunding of the HECLIS loans. We have uh, 5 million three there, as we said, uh, that has to go into that. The, uh, and as far as actually paying them, we have the cost of issuance there, which is higher. Again, that's attorney's fees, financial advisor fees, underwriter fees, et cetera. That's 109,000. And then we have a small amount at the bottom. Then we have the new money. That's actually uh, 112,000 of that new money has to go into the uh, cost of issuance. Uh, and we'll probably also see a revised sources and uses for the money that have to pay us to pay the district back will pr probably be in the next version of that, if that goes through all the, 
the parties, and I think it will, it's been through the bank and through the attorneys now. The, um, so we, that's the total and that's how we're gonna, the money we're gonna get in and how we're gonna spend it under this bond indenture. Uh, then we have a debt service. Uh, I thought that might, that might be ni nice for you to see. You can see beginning our first period payment would be on 8121. That would be a payment of uh, principal and interest. We're going to be paying principal and interest twice a year instead of just once a year. So the debt service actually gets paid on, on August 1 of 2021 of 695. Then on February 1, we're still in August and February, same way we are now, another 695. So it isn't ratcheted up at year end. That's 1,390,000. We're at actually 1 million five right now, which includes both principal and interest for an annual period, plus additionally money that was put in by uh, Cal Mortgage. So that's where you see over the time until when it actually pays off in 2000, or the end of June of 2034, uh, when we only have 514,000 left for that year, uh, the same way we have uh, for the beginning of this next year, we would have about a million two left in the bonds we have now. And that helps Barbara and me a little bit uh, of what's going on. <clears throat> the uh, bond pricing, if you look at that, it's about, it's 2.75%. Uh, you can see that the, uh, the terms of the bonds as that percentage of uh, for 13 years is uh, for the refunding bonds flows through and, and has a 12,582 total and how that breaks down. Um, anything dated there, basically you can see that portion, which is the net proceeds, it takes it back up. The summary uh, statistics, if you wanna see those, is the yield, again, as I said, is 2.750371%. Uh, the average life is 5.75 years per bond. The par value is 12,582. The net interest is 1,989,000. The maximum annual debt service is 1.3. And the average annual debt service, as the principal goes down over the 13 year life of the bond, is 1.1 million. There is no reserve required. <laughs> or, or there would be something more here, uh, which is really nice. We have a reserve. We we had a reserve in the bonds that we have now. It was one point five million dollars. It's usually one year of principal and interest. Our rather bitter was requiring one year as well. And then uh, in two thousand, we actually we got the bond. We got that bond indenture in uh, nineteen ninety one, and in twenty excuse me in nineteen ninety eight the hospital actually spent the, was actually under uh, funded, they couldn't pay for the, what was due on the bond. And so they pulled the whole, they pulled the whole, they had to pull the whole 1.5 million. And that's when we saw management company. Um, let's see, the summary of, re, of refunding, uh, you can see that kind of in a percentage basis, the next page, uh, the savings, so the, here's, the, here's the savings over the life of the bond, basically to 2030. The present value is, is, is 22 million. So the, the uh, savings actually over that time to 2030 is 1 million. So we're saving about a million dollars over if we were to keep the same bonds now and what we would have to pay in line of credit, about a million. Really, this is the bonds, a million, just over a million dollars. Uh, the present value savings of that, because that actually is at 30, and that present value of that is 1,016,000. That's what we would save in current, current year's dollars. Uh, then there's the disclosure portion. And I think that's, you can see some other series items in it are pretty much just going over what I had said. Uh, Oh, this, this one thing here, we talk, I talked about the payback. 
that will probably come in the next one. I wanted you to see that. Uh, we have calculated the amount that both the uh, financial advisor and the bond council believe qualify for a repayment to the to the district for money we have spent. All that green bow up there is architectural fees. That's 489,000 back. Uh, occupied fees, 10,000 back. Chicago title, that's the money actually for the building down the boulevard, 400,000 back. And soils engineering is for some soils work that got this, let's have $12,000 of that. And OR tech is actually some screens that we had on the leach, uh, on the uh, treatment plant which they allowed, which was 22,000. That's 934,000. That will be in the first bond. The same way they pay the cost of issuance, they will pay us 934,000 at that time. Uh, I think that's it. <laughs> uh, Chet, just, just, you know, with uh, COVID and everything happening, we don't, we're not, we can't see in the future too much, and especially right now. In, a, in August, if we couldn't make that first payment, what would happen? If we couldn't make the first payment? Yeah. There, then that's a default. They would give us time to cure that some way. Okay. Would we get a new CEO? And, or a new CFO? So, would we uh, have to get a new CFO like we did in the past? Uh, yeah, we would have to work out something different, see if we, see if we could work out something different with the bank. Okay. That would be yeah, what we would do. Question. It, it's pretty serious. Uh, uh, the defaults, defaults this time are going to be more serious than last time because we are working with a state and a Heathcliff fund. The bank's not going to do that. They sometimes can work out something else, but the interest rate's going to go sky high, you know, for whatever you actually actually... Let's say you, you can't make, you can only make half of it. I'll pick that for a minute. Okay, so you got 600,000 you can't make. What you would have to do is work out something from them for a bridge loan for $600,000. It would probably be something in the neighborhood of eight to 10% interest. Okay. But it's what I'm getting at is something like that if you ain't got enough interest out of it. What I'm getting That's at. That's what you have to do. We need to have proper planning to make sure that we're buying the. I don't expect. And, like, and why would we miss it? Again, why would we miss the first payment? Again, let me let me try to say something, Gene. We, we we would never miss the payment until we actually ran out of money on the construction, which is going to be down the road. By before the five the five million dollars will already be paid off at that time. The five point five million will be will be paid off. Others will be paid off, but. If we take too much money in construction ahead of time, let's say we, we hurry it up and we take seven million instead of five that we spend. That, like nicely enough, we have, unless we spend it on something else, we have the, the money in life that's coming from the supplemental. As you know, we have the $9 million. So that carries us through that pretty well. But when we get through it, we're still gonna have the difference between whatever it is, 20 million, 21 million, and the 12 or 13, actually it's 13 million that we have now. That difference still has to come. Now we have money that we collect from supplemental. Some years are good, like what we're having this year. Some years may not be that good. We now have Democrats in instead of Republicans, which should mean to me that they keep Obamacare because they keep Obamacare, they will, we will continue with this. The other part of that though is some of the states are gonna to have to merge together some way because a lot of the people in small states don't have, Obamacare isn't working for them, it's too expensive. California has enough population and that we've actually gone to a different model. It isn't, it isn't Obamacare. It's, actual, it's actually covered California, okay? So covered California is doing very well through this group of, managed, or group of insurance companies that, are, that have this, are sponsoring California care. So California's model, I think, will stay, and it'll be okay. I can't tell you that's true across the nation and what that'll mean about a, any kind of 
transfer of funds that California may be getting now to some other states. That I can't tell you. But other than that, it should be fine. Yeah, it, it should be. It's just we don't want to box ourselves into a corner to where. Uh, uh, well, you, know, you always have to be. If I was a company that made, were a $3 billion company, I would be doing the same thing with banks. Only the, amount, the amounts would be 10 times better. None of them have money to front, it, to front their whole, a whole construction project. They all borrow money. Because that's the, the wise thing to do financially. Like in, in this, we're actually saving a million dollars from what we're, if we try to pay it ourselves. Yeah, that, my wife says that all the time. She goes shopping. She says, I saved this much money. <laughs> it's all of sales she gets. That's so good. Yeah. <laughs> that would be true if we didn't have $9 million already sequestered in our late fund, in our investment well, fund. We, that would be true. Yeah. What about the PPP? What about them clawing some of that back after it's over? If PPP, we've already submitted, we've already submitted our rationale to keep it through the bank. The bank's approved it. And it's now been with the small business, Barbara, probably a month and a half, two months. Yes. And so it looks positive on PPP because Small Business Administration did come back, asked for some more information, right, Barbara? Yes. But and once we sent that information, they have not said that we have to pay it back. So that looks good. That's the PPP. The HHS money, which is $4 million, $4 million plus dollars, $4 million too, is much tougher. The, the California Hospital Association did a contract with Whipley, uh, our CPA firm, and we actually did too. It's gonna to cost us $17,000 to have them help us. They're working with Barbara, uh, to actually give the detail they need. And it's tough, isn't it, Barbara? Yeah. <laughs> really tough to break out. But the amounts that we can, per statute, charge towards COVID. So we have to come up with $4.2 million, effectively, to no keep the money from HHS. Now, Barbara's first pass they have to be modified a lot. The, the work papers was over $3 million, right, Barbara? Three million six, something like that. Yes. But we had we had to take some of it down because she had all the salaries in there, and we can't. You can only take the salaries that's for related to COVID. So I asked, I had to ask all the departments to come up with that. In the meantime, we also are using the payroll. Okay, we're also actually using. We tried to do what they what they did do over the last year as an estimate, and then we tried to do a sampling for two weeks and merge those three into what portion of our salaries from all departments, not just those directly work for it. Because in the beginning, we had already set up an infection control department where the main people charge their hours. And we had that, or we had, a, I think it's 018 or 081, whatever it is, <laughs> 018, I think, that where they were hit, they were, so there's a subcode in their department where if they were working for COVID, working on COVID, they were supposed to charge. The problem is, is many of the employees did not do that. Some did, many did not. So we have to try to merge all those three things and then get it past the CPA firm. Once we get all these things past the CPA firm, then that will go to HHS federal government review. And that's when we'll know. And that's still, I think we have, I think they're open, they open the portal March 1? I think March 1, the portals. Didn't we, we, we didn't know we registered. They opened it for registration, what, first of February, Barbara? When did we register? No, the middle of February, I don't, something like that. Yeah. Remember? We both talked about it and we did get registration. So we are registered on the portal that we have to go through with HHS, Health and Human Services. They don't actually open up for putting information in, I think, until March 1st. And I think until I have until like April 30th to go through and put yours in. And then they start their audit procedures. Well, they've already changed the dates a couple of times. So yes, that's they have. Kind of iffy. They changed the date a couple of times and they've changed the rules yeah. a few times. Like there's, every time we talk to the CPA firm, some of the rules have changed. Right. So we have to go back and modify what we've done to some degree. 
but it's it's a, it's it's definitely a struggle when you do it for these big CPA firms. It's even more of a struggle than doing it directly sometimes, <laughs> but you get a good product. I still don't have a lot of departments back though on the hours. Yes. I don't have a lot of departments back yet on the hours. Uh, remind them. Okay. Tell them this is a must. It's give me a, a, a drop dead date. Just Tell them if it's not back by the end of the month, it'll, it'll affect them in their, their awesome. evaluations. Hello? Yeah, no, I just tell them to give me a list of who has it. I'll send a list, a note out to them as well. Chet, the only, the, the biggest thing is the timing of this bond. It seems like if we waited till the dust settled, we've got cash now that if, if we could put it off until we knew better. Problem is you, you won't already. It was absolutely extraordinary. They put this out to like 20 banks, <laughs> including West America. For a long time, we didn't, for the, actually when it was supposed to come in, we had no bids, absolutely none. We had two banks that expressed some interest. When we finally got the audit done, because we've had such a large amount that we have on the bottom, put to the bottom line, in 20, in 19, in, 19, in 18, is the only reason that we got a bid like this. <clears throat> and if we turn this down now, we will never get one again. Yeah. We will the, other issue, on that. the other issue too, Gene, is that the interest rates are starting to climb. And so- yes, it is. You know, so the, the longer we wait, you know, we could be paying substantially more for this. So I think we're, our timing was just right. Plus the fact we'll pay more for construction. That too. Plus, you, mean, you talked about that. Plus the fact that when we did the last bond in 19, if you recall, in 1993, we refinanced our bond. Or two, I'm sorry, 2003, we refinanced our bond, our initial bond from 1991. Because we had one, I'm sorry, but because we had one board member that would not vote for it, we had delayed it two months, we lost a million dollars in savings, a million bucks. That's a fact. Go back and look at the, go back and look at the minutes. You'll find that. Okay, Catherine, what do you, do you have any? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> I, um, I just look at it as many times as we went back to the community and didn't get anything approved, you know, with help of the community that I think the timing is good that we got this because otherwise we wouldn't be going forward. That's my thought. Okay. That's a good point, Kevin. So like I said, you know, we've gotten back four times to the community and each time we went back, we had less and less community support. I mean, it's, it was astounding. Just every time it just dropped the number of people who actually voted for it. So, you know, again, I, I think, like I said, we administratively came together and just basically said, listen, the, the handwriting's on the wall. We've got to figure out how to do this ourselves. And I think that's why we need to make the best possible effort we can to try and do this internally. And like I said, if we get to the end and there is still some money that we're short or whatever, then we go back to the community of saying, hey, listen, we've done 80, 90% of this. We need your help to get over that last hurdle. And, you know, again, now, now you're talking about a mark, an amount that most likely will be very, very uh, tolerable by the community. And hopefully we'll get that support at that time. So. Plus, the fact, plus the fact, Tim, with this less and less percentage of support, we took the price down substantially. Yeah, First we time we went to the community, it was $64 million. Yep. Then it came down to 30, I think 38 million. We finally got that down to the, you know, like 20 million in range. I mean, so it's just crazy. I mean, yep. it wouldn't make any difference to me. I bet, I would bet if you got it like 10,000, you know, <laughs> if, you, if you got it down to something like 2 million or $3 million, like Tim's saying, yeah. you might get it through. You have anything about five million, you're not going to get squat through. Yeah. Well, and we've been, we've proven our good faith that we're going to go ahead and do it with or without their help, even though we're doing it for them. That's correct. Very good point. The one, the one other point I want to bring up though is, if when we do it ourselves, all the revenue bonds, the community thinks they own the hospital. They do not. 
The bondholders own the office during uh -huh. the hospital during that period. <clears throat> so it's all paid off. Just yeah. like just like how mortgage owns it now. They have a right to every hard asset and every soft asset that means cash until it's paid off. When you hear these community members say, our hospital, it's theirs to use, but they don't own it. Right. As long as you have long term debt. We're lock, we're pretty much locking ourselves into the fact we can't make any more debt. The way we're doing this loan, we're sort of froze into where we're at. Unless we, unless and, we that's true. And so we're going to be forced, to, we're setting ourselves up to have to go to the community, and it won't be a small amount, and it'll be within a couple of years. We're going to, we're setting ourselves up. To I don't believe that. I guess I believe believe it. It's not going to be within a couple of years. If it happens at all, uh -huh. if it happens at all, it'll be in seven or eight years when they refinish the project. Yeah, no, we're, <laughs> this won't be anytime soon. Well, we shouldn't be setting ourselves up. We should go to them first. Before but we, we have, Gene. We've gone to them several times to try to get help, and it hasn't happened. I so I think um, this, mess, you know what? This is what we have to work with. And so we need to do our due diligence to make it work. That's good. Yeah, okay. I mean, and I, well, I don't think it's going to be easy. Right. Once we're there, I mean, once we commit to this, then this is what we work towards, you know, and, and we've done this with the other bonds before, too, you know, when we did those other construction projects, you know, so, I mean, it's just, it's what you commit yourself to, but it's what you got to do to get the, this thing done to uh, improve the improve the hospital and the district. Right. And, and for the community, which is why we do it in the first place. But maybe as we do different phases, we can do quick little open houses if COVID allows so they can see progress as it goes you know and with our um facebook page community page with you know facebook that we can start showing what is you know put it out there so they know what's going on right yeah i want to be very visible with that absolutely okay do we not know what's going on chet what's the real cost of the, our project what is it going to cost us the the you want you want my estimate is you want my estimate I'm going to give you an estimate and don't hold me to this. And having done it before with a small hospital over to Hatchby, probably about 25 million. Okay. I, I, it, well, to Hatchby lost their hospital. They couldn't. Oh, they did. To 27 because million. Because theirs was, theirs, they, they figured 65 million. It turned out to be 100 million. Right. And then it, another 27 million to finish it, right? And they couldn't borrow from it. Advanced Health. They got, they, they got it from Advanced Health. Right. They mismanaged so, that whole thing. There's no question about it. Yeah, so and that's we, the other thing you do, Gene. When you get through, if you really are, can't operate any better than that, you better look for a partner. Right. Okay. The advantage we've got is Chet's lived through a lot of that, so he knows what to be watching for. So we uh, well, learned when that happened. No, all that started before Chet got there. He had to pick up the pieces from the end. I, Jed, I'm not, I'm not being negative, but I know you got to do what the board says and everything. And uh, I, I have heard Tim, oh, not every meeting, almost every meeting say, well, the board told me to do it. Well, he's telling the board what to do, basically. I, I think it's a bad idea, but uh, without knowing what we're doing, we don't know what the cost is. How can we get into something not knowing what the cost is? We have estimates of what the cost is, Gene. We've gone over that over and What's over again. Estimates? You, you've got these new buildings down here. Yeah. You've got the one across the street you got to remodel. We spent a million dollars remodeling that little clinic there. Yeah. Uh, what's, what's the real cost? Actually, Gene, when we first came up with the numbers, and I think it was the second iteration, and it depends on how you're, what you're drawing, of course. We had an outside cost estimator come in. I think that was when we had the 30 million, or 28 million, am I not correct on that, Tim? Uh, no, I think it was after that. It wasn't, I, it wasn't the 19 million, I know. I think it was. To be it honest. was before that. Because it was very close to what Bob projected. It was very, very close to what Bob projected. So I, I think it was, but I, I don't hold me to it. So they came up. They came up, now a professional on the outside, 
and they're usually not conservative. They're a little bit. Uh, they're a little bit more liberal because it's their, it's what you're paying them for. And I think that was when we came up with the 28 million. So the first pass wasn't just Bob. Well, it was Bob the first pass and the architect, but the second pass wasn't just him. We had because there was a concern about the cost. We hired a professional cost estimator, and I believe I could be wrong that when we came up with that, it was about 28 million. But that was a bigger facility. They was building outside of the original wall, so we scaled that back from there. So yeah. that was not the same project. Prior to COVID, our, our income, we could not do what you're wanting to do. Now, it's been good for the last. That's correct. Year right. Or right. whatever. So we're, we're going to have to, to work a little differently or work a little harder. Especially right. numbers. That's but true. Any, at any rate, I, I would just like to see us know better where we're at, what the real costs are. Uh, but at any rate, I've taken up a lot of a lot of time. I don't, <clears throat> I don't know with anything that we have, anybody gets uh, the real cost because everybody runs into something, either something that's better or something that's going to cause more damage and it's going to cost more money. But I mean, we're not going to, we can't foresee the future exactly what's going to happen. One of the things I think that would help with us financially is filling that skilled nursing we need to get that skilled nursing facility in a higher um, census. Yep. That would help. Yep. Yes, the, only, would. the only thing what we you can want. Do what you want. We are going to have to go to the community. And uh, so we'll be forced into it. And we won't, they won't have a choice. They'll, they'll, they'll help us or we'll get a partner or somebody will take us over. So yeah, there's other options, absolutely. But we're betting on and hoping, praying that this, that we're making the right choices and um, going forward with it. Catherine, can I ask you a question? You can. When we were doing approximately 90% occupancy over there, were we taking more behavioral health type patients than we do now? I think, um, I think we did but it wasn't acknowledged as that. Do you, do you, I mean, they, there was a lot of behavioral problem residents, but they didn't come in diagnosed with that in the beginning. Gotcha. I think we took them for, um, a, a lot of our rehabs turned into long-term because then once uh, caregivers were able to figure out there was life after, um, we did, we had a big turnover that way, but we did do, um, we did do behavioral and mental. It just wasn't, it wasn't tagged as that, but we did deal with the, with the problems. So, and, and, um, care for the residents that had those, um, type of diagnoses, but it wasn't as public, I would say, um, as it is now. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. But we do we do need to work on that. I would, you know, and I can help with whatever needs to be done. Welcome it. I welcome it. Okay. Is, does anyone have anything else? Catherine, anything else? Um, nope. I'm just gonna take a Tylenol after all those numbers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 Fred or John or anyone. Want to make comment about anything? Public comment. Uh, no. Not Tim? I'm good. All right. Then we're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.